Hello and welcome back to Let's Play True to Grad with me, Bring It Down. Now you may notice a echo in the background when I speak. I just moved and the new office hasn't finished being set up yet. Uh, it is in the works, just bear with me. Hopefully I have it ironed out within the next couple of episodes or so. Hopefully no more than that, but we'll see. But for now, we need to head to the scrap quarter and speak to a couple people. First we're going to fight some dogs. That's a really good turn. <laughs> Great success. Maybe there's a basement like structure in that building there. Well, too late now. So we need to speak to... Jasek, Sakharov, and... The Locksmith. Who's this guy? A mustache policeman meets you near the home of Slava and his strict mother. He gestures for you to stop. Halt, citizen. This is a crime scene. Crime scene? What are you talking about? It's what we on the forest like to call a murder-suicide. A local man stabbed his mother to death and then cut his own throat. What? What happened here? I'm telling you, it's a murder-suicide. Young local decided to end his life, took his mother with him. Happens every day in Trudegrad. The neighbors heard some screams during the night, but as usual, everyone decided to keep leave the problem to somebody else. The local precinct didn't find out until the next morning. A B cop entered the house, assessed the tragedy, and called for backup. I'm that backup. Why did Slot, I mean the deceased, do it? If you can trust the neighbors, he lost his first ever job a few days ago, in a very pathetic way. Some kind fellow helped him get a position as a driver in the TGD Cargo Shipping Company. But the lad only took two hours on the road before he ended up in a ditch. He didn't have a scratch on him, but he lost both the truck and the cargo. Obviously, he was fired as soon as they found out, went home where his mother verbally assaulted him. I told you you're nothing but a loser, and so on. Well, the kid flipped his lid for sure. As for what happened next, I believe they already covered that. I already covered that. Can I get inside? Well, if you're not too squeamish, uh, there's a lot of blood, like a small lake. But the money hidden under the floor, ahem, I mean the relevant evidence has already been collected. If there are any relatives nearby, the city will take the apartment. It's a nice place, check it out. Maybe you'd like to rent it yourself. My brother's wife works for the local administration. 
and get you a nice break on the first month's rent. Leave without listening to the rest of the offer. Alright, in we go. Well, there's only one body in here. Okay, so maybe we should take uh, stop by the the employer, the guy that owned the company, uh, back in the outskirts. Good enough. The locksmith is completely immersed in his work. He gives you a brief squinty scare, stare and silently nods. He's like you'll be getting a hello anytime soon. Alioka, the lab assistant. Listen, I have some work for you. Alioka pushes his glasses up his nose, and his big greasy face assumes a business-like expression. Uh, what do you need? Lock fixed? Made? Vice versa. I need a safe cracker. Now hold on. Hold up just a sec there, pard. Were you sent here perchance by that crook plotting to rob the local bandits? He was also looking for a getaway driver. Wait, I thought that dude went to get the driver, but he actually talked to you first. No, he did share his ludicrous plan with me the last three times he tried to assemble a team. He just can't get his mind off that cockfighting gig, eh? Shame I can't help out. I'm through with the criminal life. What crime? You don't even have to shoot anybody. Just work your magic on the safe and walk out. How hard is that? Uh-huh. I know how gigs like this go. One slip up, I have to protect myself from a horde of gangbangers. I'm as good at shooting folks as a mermaid is at ballet dancing. With my luck, if someone shoots at you, the bullets will end up hitting me. Now why turn out such a lucrative offer, brother? So you sit here and make some locks? The oak of the lab assistant laughs nervously and shivers as if very cold. You're right. This gig isn't that profitable, and also has some risks. But how am I supposed to focus on this job when I can't get the last job out of my head? Oh, I'm sensing a, there's a story behind your change of heart. It's not much of a story. A few years ago, I was working with this guy Chigarov and his gang. We robbed a courier train belonging to the Independent Wasteland Bank. It was a big splash in the news at the time. I'm surprised you never heard about it. The robbery itself went smooth as silk, but what happened after, or what happened later, every policeman and mercenary in Trudegrad was out looking for us, both in the city itself and even in the outskirts. Chigarov led the Krasno, but they found him eventually, or so I heard. I was on the list of suspects, thank God, but I was living in fear for a very long time. I was afraid of city guards, of bank goons, of every shadow but my own basically, and especially the secret police. You're a safe cracker, aren't you? What were you doing on that train? What do you think? Did they transport money in wicker baskets? While Chikarov and the rest held the guards at a gunpoint, I was solving the mechanism on a huge safe. It's just that I'm a bit nervous right now. Well, that time you're robbing a huge official institution. I'm talking about robbing some small time thugs. Noika waves your words away as if they smell bad and falls silent. This lasts for a few minutes. As you're about to leave, the man alone, he's. Leave the man alone, he starts talking. Dang it, you two might just be right. Maybe this is a huge mistake, but I'm in. Pencils work on Miko, the getaway driver, right? Okay, head for the city entrance. We'll talk at the bar at the in or in the inn. Uh-huh, see ya. Julio. And who else do I need to talk to? The apple trader.
Ooh, plus one sequence might be good. This might also be worth it. This is a lot better than the other one that I had. Um, go ahead and trade that. Alright, so we only have 13 logs. I'll hold off on this for now. I'm spotting you. Yasik Sakharov sneaks a look at his surroundings. It comes a bit closer. He rests his hand on a crate of apples, which as you know, conceals a stockpile of weapons and ammo. Are you hungry for some tasty apples, or fruit of the shooting and killing variety? Jasik Sakharov, how do you know a certain Valerian tu Tulipov? Who doesn't know Tenacious Tulipov, or should I say Tenaciously Timid Tulipov, thanks to all his money troubles? Sure I know him, wouldn't call him a friend, but he's a good drinking partner. So he wasn't your friend, huh? Is that why you murdered him? Is that why you mutilated his cold, dead corpse? Repent, beast. Do you want something or what? Jesus H. Christ. I saw the guy the day he went missing. That much is true. But we didn't even talk. I noticed him walking through here, from the direction of Mikulich's tavern. That's it. That's the whole story. Do you know where he was going? Yeah, I know. How would he know if you didn't talk to him? Oh, he wasn't alone when I saw him. Get what I mean? Larian with the, was with Daisy. The cheapest hooker in all of Trudegrad. He probably met her in Mikulich's, and they were in a hurry to find a place to do the, you know, in out, in out thing. Uh, what else do you know? Speak up. That's all, honest. You can ask Daisy for more details, I guess. But she's always hanging out at the city gates near the market in the outskirts. Okay, now I just need to find this Daisy person. Get around Jassic. Look oh, cool, everything's taking us to the outskirts. I am tempted to buy these weapon attachments. Oh, we don't really have the money. I Man, I'm sure I could scrounge it up. I'm not gonna worry about it right now. I'll see if I hear my cat in the background. He's um not handling the move too well so far. I kind of want to speak to this guy first. Uh, Stefan Snowdrop. I feel like talking to Daisy is going to skip, skip part of the quest. But there's two other things for us to do here, so I may as well do them while I'm here. So I wonder if he only spawned in for that quest. I thought I had missed him the first time I went through here. Alright, Daisy, let's talk. Daisy's still smoking her everlasting cigarette. When you approach, she falls shivering into a dry coughing fit. Still bent over, she silently gestures you closer. Cough, cough, cough. Screw. So, 
Young man, you'll take this plucky and adorable wallflower to the dance. I have a more serious question for you, Daisy. It's something personal. I ain't telling you jack crap. Not really. I heard you met with a certain Valerian Tulipov just before you vanished. Heh. I like the cut of your jib, stranger. Listen up, and I'll tell you what I know. I'm listening. I saw this Valerian you're looking for, Dandelion, my pimp, a couple times. He didn't notice me then, but the night he went missing, I saw him in Mikulich's tavern. He was just sitting there, looking all grim, holding a glass of moonshine, like he was his last friend in the world. I offered him my services, and he bit right away. Didn't even haggle. Just took my hand and said, Lead the way, pretty lady. Act Tui. So off we went to my friend's dirty old shack a few blocks away. The woman cast a furtively a furtive glance over her shoulder. That's when he got snatched, on the way there. Serious stuff. I see. Uh, who snatched him? Some young guys in ski masks, tall and buff looking. They came out of a dark alley, grabbed Valerian, and dragged him away. They didn't touch me, which is great, but I was scared stiff. I overheard their leader whispering to Valerian something like, Now you'll lead us to your buddy Stefan, too. Strange, eh? Why do they need this Stefan? Or where do they drag Valerian off to? Mysterious as heck, if you ask me. Hmm. You sure you don't know anything else, Daisy? Not a thing. I'll tell you this, though. I've seen plenty of muggings, and this wasn't that. Well, you sort of did provide me with a clue, so thanks. Bye. So we still meet with Stefan, it looks like. Looks like everything's gonna work out just as I wanted it to. All right, let's go talk to Pencil and the gang. Three dubious felons with whom you're going to rob the other equally dubious felons have already arrived. With exaggerated gestures, the ringleader is explaining something to his two, th to his two colleagues. They're listening with bitter expressions. It's clear they don't share his enthusiasm. You're here finally. All right, the whole team is assembled. Okay, Pencil, let's not drag this out. My name is Mika the Wheel, and I'm the getaway driver. The Yoko the lab assistant, Cracksmith. Yes, and I'm Pencil, after this ship. And this here is... Pencil points at you. There's an awkward silence. And this is... Ahem. Actually, what is your name? Oh, I forgot to introduce myself. Donnie, this guy's right-hand man. What the heck? I thought you two knew each other. Pencil, are you out of your mind? Crap, man. What if he's an undercover cop? Chill out, both of you. I've been observing this fine young fellow since he arrived in Trudegrad. He's an adventure seeker. Isn't that right? Watch those pie holes, Hepcats. I ain't no popo. You heard the man. He's one of us, I'm telling you. Hawk is cheap. Anybody can deny being a cop. Doesn't mean. Calm yourself, Mika. Believe me. About people, I am never wrong. What about the time you organized that delivery of rusty weapons to Krasno, and all your associates turned out to be undercover police officers? Ah, uh, the mistakes of youth. Come on, guys. Enough is enough. We have a plan to discuss. I agree. Let's talk about the robbery. Yep, our target is an illegal cockfighting ring run by a man called Gennadievich. If we can crack their safe, we'll be golden. Uh-huh, and how exactly are we going to do that? I doubt Gennadievich is in a hurry to share his money. Ha, huh. it's not like he gets a vote. Yogo got himself killed out in the Trudegrad Road, leaving his posse grief-stricken and confused. His safe is being guarded by two and a half men. See where I'm going with this? I have a bad feeling about this. Are you sure he's dead? Yes, but that's not all. Their cellar has been locked for more than a week now. The entrance is only one guard. Only a couple of people have been inside so far. Until they pick a new ringleader, the money will stay right there in the safe. How can you be sure that Gennadievich is dead? I have connections in the road guard from back when I was a smuggler. They told me the old... Uh, shoot, the old hoot. Yeah, the old hoot got blown up in this car. Some unresolved beef with a group of chicken farmers. 
Are you sure the money is still there? Absolutely. Ganadievich's assistant is in charge of collecting the proceeds after each fight. He was killed in the explosion with his boss. And so the little enterprise elects a new ringleader. That money will stay right there in the safe. But what makes you sure there'll be so little security on site? They don't have a lot of people. Some of them died with their boss and the rest are now fighting with each other, probably. We have to act quickly while they're still running around like headless chickens. Okay, I see. I explained your plan already. It's easy as turn up pie. Your office is located between the scrap quarter and Miklich's tavern. That's where we'll meet up. Miko will bring his car and you, me, and the Oka will do the rest. Knock out the outside guard and intimidate whoever's inside. If anyone's there at all. The rest is simple. You and I will hold the remaining guards at gunpoint while the Oka opens the safe. After that, we race away in Mika's car and split the loot. That's when I'll also give you the info about the professor. Sounds a little too easy. You sure you're not missing anything? Positive. I spent a long time planning this job. Everything's going to work perfectly. Fine, it's a deal. So we meet between the scrap quarter and Miklitch's tavern then. Exactly. But we need to act fast. Who knows how long this window of opportunity will last. When you exit the scrap quarter, go right. We'll be waiting for you. But come alone. We don't need any extra people. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Hold up a sec. How much money are we talking about? I'm not risking my life for a couple thousand rubles. Relax. I've been to a couple of their cockfights. It was super crowded and people were making bets in the hundreds of thousands. I can't promise, but there's a good chance there are millions of rubles waiting for us in that safe. At least two or three. From your mouth to God's ears as they say. Alright, so I said to come alone. Does that mean I can't bring Hexogen? I mean, he's the muscle of the whole operation. I don't want to leave him behind. It's still only 13. Let's see what happens if I bring Hexogen anyway. I notice Pencil and his cohort standing near Mika the Wheel's car. Pencil waves at you. You want to temporarily say goodbye to your followers, if you have any, and join the three bandits. Oh cool, alright, so it gives you the option of leaving them. You jump in the car, where your partners in crime are already waiting. Pencil, as usual, is upbeat, but the other two are visibly tense. Mika is tapping nervously on the wheel and popping his head out the window every few seconds. Loka, the lab assistant, is compulsively checking his magazine. All right, ladies and germs, the, the plan is simple. Mika will wait here for us. Me, Loka, our new friend, pencil points at you, will go down to the basement where they stage the cockfights. There will likely be one lone guard at the entrance. We need to get rid of him quietly. Inside will be a couple more people at most. We take them at gunpoint, find them safe, Loha cracks her open, piece of cake. Pencil pulls three scarves from his jacket, tying one over the lower part of his face. He offers the other two to you and Loha. Better safe than sorry. I don't see... yeah, that's a good plan. I can't imagine what could go wrong. That's the spirit. Watch and learn, guys. Pencil gives you a thumbs up and pops open his door. This is gonna be smooth like butter, I promise. Alright, enough dilly-dallying. Let's move. He tucks his gun under his leather jacket and gets out of the car. Uh, yes. With the scarves over your faces and guns hidden under your shirts, the three of you walk up the block and turn into a narrow side street. You walk fast for about 30 more meters before coming to a T-junction. A five-story house from the 50s towers above you, but the way is blocked by a handful of tumble-down shacks. Crap, uh, this was all open space just a week ago. These anthills keep going up everywhere, Pencil swears. That five-story building, that's where we're going. The road to the left traverses a residential block. On the right area, lean-to shanties and medieval-looking spiked fences.
I guess go right along the fence. You decide to take the empty, dirty street. On the left, you're covered by odd-looking huts, and on the right, by a long fence bordering a ditch full of weeds and sewage. Out of nowhere, a raggedy-looking mutt trots into your path and starts barking his lungs out. The beast isn't actually threatening, but it might draw the attention of your upcoming victims. Uh, it's gonna pass him silently, just play it cool. Ignoring your apprehensions, you pass the nasty dog by, unperturbed. The old cur continues its hysterical barking. If there is a guard outside the building, he now definitely knows someone is coming. But in any case, you can't assess the situation until you get where you're going. And the walk is not long. You arrive at the entrance of the illegal cockfighting basement where a lone guard is pacing back and forth. Apparently, the barking dog you met on the way in has him spooked, and he keeps looking around suspiciously. Pencil presses his index finger to his lips and ducks behind a pile of dirty boxes. You and Loja follow. The moment of truth, we have to get rid of this lump head. And quietly, Pencil takes a quick peek at the situation and as quickly ducks back. This part is up to you. Don't let us down. The doorway is hidden from the eyes of both passerby and the card, so there's no need for violence. But getting there without drawing his attention will be hard. Alright, well we have a lot of speech crap, so uh, take your mask off, leave your weapon behind the boxes, and go talk to the guard. The guard doesn't look especially happy to see you. After looking you up and down, he asks, What are you doing here? Stab the guard. You stab the guard with the icy self-assurance of a seasoned assassin. He tumbles to the ground before he has time to realize he's dead. Pencil comes out of cover. Kashi looks from you to the bleeding, still twitching body, then back to you. As a stone cold piece of work, he adjusts his jacket as if literally chilled, waits for Lyoko. Come on, let's check out this door. Approach the door. The ironclad door is secured with a hefty padlock. Pencil scratches his head, unsure, but Loka, the lab assistant, needs only tinker with it for a minute, and the door is open. He turns to you. All set. Take a look and see what's inside. Enter. Uh, just as you step down, in the, step down into the basement, light from several projectors hits you straight in the eyes. Even half blinded, you see there are more than two guards. One of the men speaks with palpable tension in his voice. Who the heck are you, and what are you doing here? That's like as pale as a corpse. Dead corpse. Genadievich? But what the heck are you doing here? You are killed on the highway. Killed what now? Oh, that. Yeah, I started that rumor myself, idiot. See. Secret cartel placed a bounty on my head, so I had decided to assassinate myself before they could. But my contacts in the merchant guard. Your contacts are crooked, crap for brains. They sell their services to the highest bidder. Oh, I paid them well to spread that little rumor. Speaking of sellouts, is that you, Pencil? You decide that since I was dead, you're free to rob our place of business. Now you mentioned the secret cartel. What do you know about them? Any darn business. What I know I'll take with me to the grave. You think we showed up here with only three guys? There are like ten more watching the door outside. You serious? Darn. I thought you guys are totally clueless amateurs. Looks like you're live old Genadievich. He and his companions are looking at one another with dread. By the way, why did the secret cartel want you dead in the first place? How should I know? One day we found the cartel symbol, the muted horn, outside our cellar door. Everyone knows that's how they mark their enemies. Maybe my men angered them by selling Black Lotus from here. I heard the cartel wants a monopoly on the trade. But that's all I know, as much as any random schmuck on the street. Muted horns, violence, huge network of connections. Well-known stuff. Where, where's their base? Who are their leaders? 
Better not to know, if you want to live. Food for thought. Anyway, throw down your weapons. The fight's over. That also gives you a happy little wink with one eye. What's keeping the other fixed on the scowling bandits? Nicely done, buddy. At least someone did their clever today. Your carelessness almost got us killed. Yeah, you need to vet your informants a little more carefully, Pencil. Oh please. All's well that ends good, am I right? And the one to thank is our newest companion, the Master Negotiator. Let's not, <laughs> Let's not start patting each other's backs just yet. Uh, what do we do next? Uh, nothing much. In this jerk's office. Pencil points to the business end of his sawed off at Genyadievich. We should find the safe. It's your time to shine, Lyoka. I know how you operate. Click, click. And it springs wide open. Now you go with Lyoka, pal. Watch his back. I'll stay here and cover these clowns. So be it. Alright, I'm actually going to call it here. I don't know how long this sequence is going to go. And in the next one, we'll finish up the heist. Yeah. That's a good idea. But for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.